Hi, I'm Josh Keegan, and I'm here in Kiruna in Sweden. And believe it or not, I'm going to visit the IRF, which is the actual Space Research Institute right here. And yes, that is a rocket right outside their institute. A real, real rocket, including the launch facility. Wrong! I couldn't have gotten this more wrong. It's the Institute for Space Physics. Oh. Hi, I'm Josh Keegan and welcome to a very cold episode of The Space Down Under, where I would normally shine a light on Australia's own space industry. But over the Christmas break, I was in Kiruna, Sweden for a holiday with my family. Kiruna is a mining town that lies inside the Arctic Circle and is home to both the Institute for Space Physics and the Leo University of Technology. In this episode, I got a chance to take a tour of this wonderful facility with Philip Whitman, a PhD student from the Institute of Space Physics, who is currently working on hardware due to be launched to study Jupiter and where there is an interesting link to Australia. Hi. Hi, oh. I'm Philip. There was also a chance encounter meeting another two PhD students in the adjoining Lalua University of Technology working on space hardware. This is yet another one of those episodes where I will mispronounce almost everything, especially those they have a Swedish name. Oh, and also during parts of the tour, there is some background noise I could clean up with some software, but when you're getting a private tour where actual components will be made and tested to be added onto future deep space missions. Lastly, the lighting conditions, some parts of the video were quite bad as my visit to IRF on the, was on the last day of any sunlight before entering almost a month of Arctic twilight with the sunrise at 11, 11 a.m and sunset at 11.51 a.m. If you're new here, please click on the subscribe button. And while you're here, take a moment to check out my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Josh Keegan. So grab a cup of coffee or at least your favorite beverage. And let's get started on this very eye-opening and very chilly episode where one more step and I could have been banned alive? Do not go for the sunset because you will be burned alive. The IRF has been working on space hardware for over 60 plus years, adding or contributing to missions, many of which have relied on the support of Australia's very own deep space network. The IRF solar system, this includes all bodies where we have been to, starting with Saturn, with Cassini Huygens, yeah. Jupiter, which will be choose. Yes. Uh, Rosetta, this true. Yeah, Rosetta, yeah. Rosetta, yeah. Um, Mars, for example, Mars Express. Yes. Earth, ob obviously, uh, we have uh, satellites <laughs> in uh, yeah in Earth yeah. or around Earth. Moon, the most prominent one is, uh, is the Chinese one right now, which is on the far side of the Moon, with Chang'e 4 and U22, I think. Yep. Uh, Venus with the Venus Express. Mercury, we are currently in uh, cruise phase to it with Bertie Colombo. And yeah, that's about it, I guess. Don't worry, I'll place a link to all of those in the comments below and you can have a good browse through them. Kirina also hosts ESCAT, the European Incoherent Scatter Scientific Association and their 32 meter radar receiving dish. This radar dish actually dominates the horizon no matter where you are in Kirina, rising above the surrounding tree line. This fully steerable radar dish was originally a UHF system but has since been converted to receive VHF frequency and is operated by ESCAT with all data shared with the IRF. The radar can be operated locally or remotely by one of the other radar sites, and no, I'm not saying the names. Its main purpose is to study phenomena including space weather, space debris, and the aurora borealis. Lastly, some 40 kilometers from the center of Kiruna lies the S-Range Space Center. S-Range, as it's commonly known, was built in 1964 by the European Space Research Organization, or ESRO. ESRO was originally built with an emphasis on atmospheric and ionospheric research using both high altitude balloons and sounding rockets. In 1972, the ownership was transferred over to the Swedish Space Corporation, and in 2013, oversight was granted to the European Space Agency, or ESA, or ESA. The Swedish Space Corporation has a little known link to Australia. The Yagathara Satellite Station is part of the West Australian Space Centre, and commenced operations in 2012. 
So I went halfway around the world to find out about Australia's links to Sweden. The Swedish Space Corporation has played an important role in the history of Kiruna, otherwise known for its mining of iron ore and tourism. This picture was taken at the entry into the main part of town, and there is also one at the entrance of the IRF. So I'm now in Kiruna doing my PhD in experimental physics and yep. uh, or space plasma physics. Officially, officially, it's called experimental physics because I'm a hardware scientist. So I'm building up a space instrument, the Trojan yep. Plasma Dynamics and Composition Analyzer, yep. which will eventually fly to Jupiter. And yes, I'm also calibrating this instrument, doing some other tests on the side. Yep. The Jovian Plasma Dynamics and composition analyzer Philip is currently helping to build will be exploring both the Jupiter and Galilean moons as part of the Particle Environment Package (PEP) on board of the JUICE spacecraft. JUICE is the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer and is planned for launch in 2022 on an Ariane 5 rocket, arriving at Jupiter sometime in 2029. JUICE will spend at least three years making detailed observations of Jupiter and three of its largest moons. Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa. We have sometimes some companies which are helping us. Our workshop is too occupied, yeah. but normally, say 90% of the stuff for our space instruments is made in-house. So these are all various kind of uh, pieces. We have here a piece uh, which failed out of titanium. We have here some aluminium piece. We're using peak as isolator, which is, for example, this one. Uh, we are iridating it, so it gets this nice uh, goldish color. Yep. And then some pieces we also, for thermal reasons or uh, photon suppression reasons, we're painting in some black color. We're using some copper pieces, which you could, for example, see here um, for better contacts. And then we also have a tungsten as new material for shielding purposes, but yeah, as the tungsten is something we want to get rid of if possible again, because it's really hard to manufacture and takes a lot of time and also it's really costly. Uh, we're currently taking out some pieces for chain A and chain C. Chain yep. C is a Jovian plasma dynamics and composition analyzer, which is the second instrument or sensor we're building for choose which you can find uh, on the ESA website more information about. Okay, so why are you baking them? Uh, it's vacuum baking. Vacuum so baking, oh right. Pressure of some 10 to the power of minus 7 millibars and if it's heating it up and then cooling it down again we're removing water and other stuff ah, which is still on the right. board yep. or maybe still on the board Yep. which is then gone and which is not trapped underneath the new isolation. So that's the reason why we're baking some basically. Okay. We can test on air and temperature cycles similar to a thermal vacuum system. And here is the range. Uh, we can go up to some 200 degrees, which is a really hot case. Wow. Or a hotter case, not if you go to Mercury. We also yep. get that. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we have a mission on Bepi Colombo. Uh, which is currently flying to uh, Mercury. And then we also have the already beforehand mentioned truth mission, which will go to Jupiter. We have here in front of you our thermal vacuum chamber. Um, it's a vacuum chamber with which we can heat up and cool down our space instruments, which we're building at IRF. Um, these instruments will actually fly later on. Heating up and cooling down, we are basically simulating the thermal cycling of the instrument. Yep. So if it's exposed to sun, or if the whole spacecraft is in sun, or if it's in a shadowed region, because we may end up at some point behind Jupiter. Yep. And that's exactly what we can simulate here. We can cycle it, so continuously uh, heat up and cool down, or we could just set one specific temperature, leave it there, test it there. And then cool down again. So yeah. how, how did you how did you end up here in Kiruna, of all places? This is the top of the world. So how did you end up here? Yeah, Kiruna is uh, quite special with its climate. Um, 
because we have lots of snow, we have temperatures down to minus 40 degrees. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, months with total darkness approximately. We have also only sunlight 24 seven yep. for more than a month. So it's, it's really special. And I ended up here uh, doing my Space Master, which I heard from when I was uh, still studying uh, at high school. All right, yeah. Um, and I was on a master information day because my father forced me to go there because <laughs> I should know something about what I should study. Yep. And yeah, with that, I heard about the Space Master and I was like, yes, I want to do this master. Um, and at this point, I knew the first semester would be in Würzburg, which is basically cl quite close to my hometown. Yep. And later on, the second would be in Kiruna, and then I could decide where I want to go. Mm -hmm. So it sounded quite fun and amazing. And yep. that's the reason why I ended up here, because I knew Kiruna already before, yep. uh, because of my master degrees. Yep. And then my PhD was just a logical follow-up afterwards. Okay. Whilst I was on the tour, Philip took me through a beautifully decorated tunnel with kids' drawings where I had a chance meeting encounter with both Moses and Chris, both who were PhD students in the Lulea University of Technology. Whilst technically they are part of two separate institutions, the tunnel we walk through links both buildings while sheltering you from the adverse weather conditions outside, which can be quite cold. The Lulea University of Technology in Kirana is quite unique. It has an estranged rocket sitting in the foyer where you can relax or study with a rocket looming over you. When I was visiting, there was an aero trim where you could pretend to be an astronaut training in the 1960s. The Lulea University of Technology is Scandinavia's northernmost university with four campuses. The one in Lulea, which is the main campus, Skelefthia, Pitea, and Kirana, which is the space science. While I was there, I got to meet Christabel Perroy, who's doing concurrent engineering of small satellites using hardware in the loop simulation. And also Moses, I'm not gonna say his last name, I apologize. He's doing advanced software defined radio technology. So this is the technology which is basically um, implemented the radio functions in, you know, in software. Yeah. Like instead of having the old school hardware, like the one you see over here. Something like that, instead of having that yeah. over there. Now, uh, I can just use this. So this is the SDR front end. Yeah. And uh, you know when it's connected to the computer, I can get the uh, the IQ signals and do some pure C++ programming. Yep. And I was able to do exactly what that radio there is doing. Wow. Yeah. So what's the what's the black cable connected to? Yeah. Okay. So the black cables are connected to uh, two antennas on the roof. So yes. we have uh, one UHF and one VHF antennas. Yes. And uh, this is the um, this is the frequency band which is used for amateur radio. Oh. Okay. Yep. CubeSats mostly. Yep. Yeah. And now since we are up north here, we've been tracking it. We can see a lot of CubeSats, and we we have a really. Couple. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. And we have a couple of uh, a couple of software for tracking some of. Yep. Decoding the actual telemetry form. Uh, this is a very flat table made out of uh, epoxy. So when you lay yes. out, so it stays very flat according to the you know, local gravity field. Yep. Uh, so the whole point of this is like if you have this very flat surface and we have these three, how uh, these air bearings, like this, like a very flat air bearings. So these uh, components, they blow air to the table, yep. so they create a film yep. of uh, this pressured air, so it's basically floating, this platform is floating yes. over the uh, epoxy table. So we create a sort of frictionless environment. Yep. So the, the entire point is that um, there is no normal forces, so it's sort of uh, emulating space conditions because the, the, the system is not encountering any 
resistance. Any, any resistance. For example, uh, we had that demonstration of uh, space debris floating. Yep. And with those robots, we, we simulate the kinematics of uh, any spacecraft tracking the space debris. So that was a, an example that we were doing. Uh, maybe we can take a look. The, the experiment that he was doing is basically tune these masses yes. uh, to the exact uh, correct positions to make it just balanced enough to not alter you. So it is not unstable, yes. but uh, bad enough. <laughs> so you don't alter the dynamics of, of the target system that yes. you're going to put on top. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just to see how this works, maybe I can yep. I can just try to 2000 PSI, but these are just, you can see, so these are paintball tanks. Yep. But you can see how well, just with a bit of impulse, yeah. it starts spinning. Maybe Moses can pull it before. I will it catch it. And uh, yeah. Do you have any idea that you wanted to end up in the space industry when you were when you were in high school, or was it just that you did the masters that you saw the masters and that's exactly what you wanted to do? Um, I wasn't sure in high school said I want to end up in space industry. Yep. I knew I wanted to do something engineering like, and I was also quite sure that the engineering part is nice. Yeah. I wasn't sure in which direction it would go. Space was something which I was quite familiar with. Also physics was some option. And then, yeah, it turned out to be that space is what I wanted to do and now yeah. I'm exactly where I want to be with my PhD actually. Excellent. Okay. And what's your PhD in? Which is the final question. So my PhD is about the Jovian Plasma Dynamics and Composition Analyzer and that's currently the topic. Uh, it may change for my thesis, <laughs> so, but currently yep. that's the topic and yep. it is about uh, calibrating, testing and building up a space instrument which will eventually fly to Jupiter Yeah. Uh, with ESA's Truth mission as part of the Particle Environment Package. If you enjoyed my tour of this absolutely fascinating institution, please place a comment and let me know. If you're looking for more detailed information on how you can be part of this Arctic wonderland, where you can still obtain credit towards your degree or PhD, I'll leave links to IRF and the Lilea University of Technology in the comments below. I also have a Patreon page where you can help me out with everything to do with joshkeegan.com and suggest things you'd like to see. You can also get exclusive insights into upcoming videos and help me out with scripting and fact checking. If you work in the Australian space industry, please reach out to me via joshkeegan.com as I'd love to know what you're working on and feature it on The Space Down Under, except for this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel as I have a lot more videos coming up around aerospace, drones, technology, and of course, coffee. Thanks very much for watching. And remember, stay caffeinated.